no my hi my my fellow Silverstream classmates 1989 to 93 well it's bloody celebration time i did it set a target of 50 videos and tonight we bring you the 50th number five zero so i'm super stoked to have achieved that for you guys the feedback's been awesome and um really appreciate all your support and it's great that we've been able to connect so this is number 50 and good news we've got another one coming in tomorrow morning from the uk so that'll be number 51 but celebrating our, our 50th now our next classmate interviewee i haven't seen since school so almost 30 years i know a wee bit about this fella great guy day boy from upper hut had a couple of older brothers who i remember who who, who were ahead of us um at school but what i love about this guy and it's been mentioned in a few videos probably the most underrated rugby player of our year and look we had some good rugby players right but this guy for some reason he was a fullback so he adorned that beautiful number 15 jersey but if you needed someone to make the bloody crucial last tackle last line of defense this is the guy that you wanted in your team i seen it i saw it from my own eyes and i i, I always just remember like, jesus this guy's a really good player, and it wouldn't surprise me if he if he goes on to sort of bigger things outside of school. So underrated player, great all round guy. Got to know him a bit better in um, in our latter years at, at Silverstream. Now he's beaming in live from Australia, from the uh, Gold Coast, and um, you know, and we're really lucky that he's come on board. So look straight into it. It's time to say hello to uh, our fiftieth video vlog, the man himself, the Upper Hut tackling machine. Kia ora, Ryan Swanson. G'day, bro. Uh, hey, you. How you doing, man? Ah, uh, mate, I'm doing very well. And again, thank you for joining us. It's good to see you. And I know the guys are going to be really stoked to see you and hear hear that voice again, and just to catch up with how you've been. So, thank, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for the intro, mate. We'll see what we can do. Ah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. No, it meant every word too. And I know some of the boys watching this will agree. Now. Good to see you. Um, look, where where are you? Where, where are we chatting to you from? Uh, I'm on the Gold Coast now. We're um, we're about 10, 15 minutes out in the family suburbs now. Not moved out of it. So oh. yeah, nice quiet spot. Fantastic, mate. Well, look, let's start off. Let's take us back to um, your early years or, or for, formidable years at Stream. So 1989. Where did you come from? What brought you to Silver Stream? How many years did you end up doing? And can you remember your first days? Oh, um, started in 89, coming from St. Joe's. There's a whole big herd of us actually coming from St. Joe's. Um, I went all the way through to 93. But um, my last year, I did a few more sixth form subjects. So I did like the seventh form high school cert to get your university entrance thing. Did that. And um, I took sixth form PE and a couple other courses. So, yeah, I sort of mixed that last year with a few of the younger fellas coming through behind us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't really have much of a choice where I was going. My old man went to Silver Stream. He did a couple of years, I think, tops. Yeah. Um, he was off the farm. Then he was back to work straight away, pretty much. Uh, and both my brothers went through. They finished, I think, two years before I started was my, um, my next brother up. They were pretty close. They were only a year apart, those two boys. That's right. I remember your brothers. And what their names again? Uh, there's Carl and Craig, the two of them. Right. Uh, so were they yeah. just just the three Swanson boys? Yeah. Yeah, I think mum's decided that was enough. She gave up. <laughs> uh, gave up trying to get the daughter. So, yeah, oh, just the three lads. Yeah, awesome, mate. Hey, look, you, 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 as I mentioned, mate, I, I, I rated you as a rugby player. Did you play any rugby after school and did you carry on after after? Yeah, I sort that? of um, went to Uphart Club after that and played local up there. Played for one year at CIT. Um, yeah, and then sort of um, oh, Aaron Whiteman and myself, I think Karen come up as well. There's a few of the boys went up at rugby club after that and sort of played around. It was only really an excuse to go and have a few drinks. Um, underrated is probably another word for fairly lazy on the field, really. <laughs> <laughs> Do enough yeah. to get by, have a cold shower, and then go and have a cold beer. That was always hey, sort of plan. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, but you made that tackle when it counted, though. Yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the, the physical side of it. I suppose if you're only going to do one thing, at least make sure you can do that well. I couldn't kick to save myself, so I might as well make the tackle instead. <laughs> oh, awesome, mate. Now, um, so did you do end up doing the full five years at Stream in the end? 
Yeah. 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 Left at the end of 93. And then, um, yeah, I was sort of a bit lost after that, really, on where to go, what to do. A few of the boys were. A few of the boys were. Yeah. But tell us about that. So, 94, what did you end up doing? Uh, I did a year at CIT, did um, some sort of IT course. Uh, I know I passed it, but I couldn't tell you what the hell it was. <laughs> um, yeah. Used to spend a lot of time going bowling, tenpin bowling, and off the pub. And again, it was another excuse to go and play footy. Played for the CIT team. We sort of started up that year. It was really good. Did you did you um, have a few, a few beers at that CIT bar? They had their own little bar there, didn't they? Oh, cheap drinks, cheap drinks, very yeah. messy nights. Yeah, cheap drinks. That was good. <laughs> yeah, good laugh. All right, let's let's talk about what you do um, for a job. So, what look? What do you do? And what have you been doing? What have you been doing all these years? Well, sort of, I did that CIT course. Um, did twelve months of that, then left. I ended up um, working at a service station in Upper Hutt, one of the old Celtics ones. Ended up managing that after a couple of years. Oh yeah. Um, and then from there, I lost my license again for six months, being a, being a goose. So I actually left, come over to WA, went out um, mining and drilling out to Kalgoorlie, Mekathara, all those sort of random areas. Um, did six months or so of that, and uh, then went back to NZ for a while. Sort of, I met a girl. Um, yeah, we sort of hooked up then when I was, what, 20, 21? Um, and we're still now. I married her eventually. Um, it took me about 10 years to get her trained properly. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, only 10. Yeah, we got married. Jeez. Yeah. Oh, yeah, only 10. It's not bad, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've done well. Hey, um, well, look, good to see you way straight into it. So, introduce your, your wife to us and, and your children. Uh, yeah, I married a girl from, um, she was from Hiratonga College. Um, hey. Helen McIntosh was her maiden name. Um, I think she was at Maystone, possibly with you boys as well. Rings a bell. I'm sure I know yeah. Helen McIntosh. So, are, yeah. are, you, are you guys the same age? Yeah, yeah, we're only like six weeks apart. Right. So she was there, um, eighty six and eighty seven, uh, yeah, eighty seven, eighty seven, eighty eight. Yeah. So if you boys come down to some patch, she would have gone to Hiratonga then. Wow. Um, yeah. So well, we moved good. over here to Oz. All right, we got married and then we moved over here to Oz with no kids. I think that was 06. Um, yeah, so she had a good job, but it, it fell apart. They moved into Wellington, I think. Finally, she agreed with me and said, yeah, cool, let's move. Let's go. Well, I'll tell you what, Helen McIntosh definitely rings a bell. Say hi to her um, uh, from we'll us. And, and, and how old are your children? Uh, I got four. Uh, we got two girls. They're 14 and 13. Um, and then I've got two boys following up behind them. Two are on his roughies, Mont. They're just rat chucking monsters. They're uh, nine and six. Oh, wow. Fantastic. So it sounds like a, yeah. a, good, a busy household at the, at the oh, school. We, uh, we stopped at three, and the wife actually had her tubes tied. And, uh, yeah, I don't trust doctors too much because we had another one after that. That's, that's, that's called asking for your money back material. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, um, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, wow, hard case. Well, good on you, mate. And congratulations on on your marriage and 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 your kids. That's that's what it's all about uh, yeah, these days, true. certainly for us guys. Um, now you've you've already mentioned where you live. So and then, so it sounds like you've been an Aussie um, for some time now. Quite how you find it? Quite different to Upper Hutt to NZ or, or or not? Yeah, it's a lot of the things are different. A lot of it's the same. I mean, weather's definitely far better. Um, <sighs> What's it's been said that the worst thing about Australians is the Australians. It's um, there's some funny people. There's some bloody good people as well. Yeah, it's like everything, you know. People are the same generally where you go. Most people are good people. Yeah. Um, some of them are downright dipshits, but um, no, nah, it's a laugh. It is. Yeah. It was a real culture shock at first. I think now I've probably got used to it. Um, yeah. I mean, they, they speak English. That's the same thing. But, yeah, that... uh, there's a lot of differences from there, man. Yeah, they tell me but, uh, um... it's been good. They tell me there's a lot of Kiwis in, particularly in, in, in Queensland. Have you bumped into heaps or a few oh, over there? Loads. Well, I probably know half a dozen people that have been born and bred on the Gold Coast. Wow. Um, and I've worked in different workshops all up and down the coast, even into Brisbane and that. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's a heap of Kiwis here. Like um, that was one thing about your videos, like when you caught up with Setu. Yeah. Um, he's only just around the corner from where I'm currently on my current rotation for work now. So I'm going to try and hook up and try and do lunch or something with him. That's a good laugh. He's, that's he's a top bloke. He is a top bloke. And of course, you guys went yeah. to school together. Um, so did you know he was so close to you? No. 
Oh, no, awesome. I lost track with, with most of the guys, so that's been one real good thing about this. Yeah, I'll try and send them a message and um, sort it out. Oh, I'm It'll sure. Be, uh, yeah, be laugh. That'll be great, mate. A couple of old uh, St. Joe's boys. Uh, he, yeah, he's, you know, he's, I know he's watching these videos, so um, that I'm sure he'll um, make the time and look at it. Anything, these videos, you know, if, if it's, it's just about that reconnection and um, yeah, so good on you, mate. That'll be, um, that'll be great catching yeah. up with, with set. Now, look, you've got a whole heap of memories that stream like the rest of us. <laughs> um, have you got anything that you just can't shake that's been with you for years and years? You know what? I remember that. Has you got anything that you can share with, with the rest of us, there's yeah, there's been a few, eh? especially like watching these brings them back. There's um, you're saying about the first days at stream. And I mean, one of the first things that happened was all us third formers had a meeting, and um, Sister Francis Marie run it. And I still remember her speech saying that you know we were we were big fish before in a little ocean, and now we've changed. And just like amazing to hear she's still going, man. That's, That's a funny, yeah. a great memory. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. and she's going. She's going strong. So uh, yeah. a, a centurion now at the home of compassion, and um, yeah, wonderful to hear. She's you know, I mean, she's lived a, a yeah. whole life, and she's still going. Apparently, still got her wit, you know, that uh, very sharp wit <laughs> um, 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 with her. But yeah, oh well, what else? What else can you yeah, remember? You laugh. There was one um, one class. And I think it was actually Jeremy Curry stuck his head around the door. Remember, um, old Chris Rulestone. Like he had a beak on him like nothing else. It was a massive honk. And uh, we were sitting there in class for about fifth form, I think. It might be fourth or fifth form. And he stuck his head around the corner and yelled out, the bald eagle. Wow. <laughs> and the whole class was just killing himself. And old real stone's like, with his big nose looking around the time chasing down the corridor. Yeah, yeah. I can see the side, side profile now. Just it'd be oh, perfect. It's, um, I also remember, pretty sure it was Chris Fui. I, um, one of the things I got in trouble for was having my motorbike at school one day. So there's a few boys, we're doing laps. I don't know if it was a weekend or what. And we're doing a few laps and just playing around. And uh, it was all good. No one got hurt, no dramas, no problems. So I'm pretty sure it was Fooey rode it off the top of number two. It was Off the bank. It was Fooey. It was a, he cut his foot up, mashed his lips. He made a mess. But there was bits of skin hanging off my bike. It wasn't pretty. (laughs) No, this has been, this has been (laughs) spoken about a few times now. It was Mr. Fooey. Um, his e- evil can evil um, um, bike <laughs> bike uh, escapade, and, and that and that was your bike. That was mine. Yeah, that was a laugh. I'm sure, that was funny. It was like, a, oh, that's not good. With a bit of Philly DNA <laughs> in it. <laughs> yeah, home giving a hose off as good as new. Yeah, well, of course you'd be happy to know that that same Mr. Philly became the head of RE at St. Pat's Silver Stream. So, <laughs> from one that's hand to, to the other, the folks have ended up just complete turnaround, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah that, laugh, huh? that's right, definitely. So let's talk. Look, what, what do you, again? So remind us. What, so what's your what's your current job uh, and role now? What do you do? Uh, I've just started as a um, a motor vehicle assessor for the RACQ. Okay, what's that? Which is like a it's a big um, what is it Royal Automotive Club of Queensland or something? It's a big insurance company, um, but a bit different because these guys like we get time off every year to go out into the sticks and help farmers and rebuild machinery and restore after farms and floods and things like that. Oh, wow. Um, it's not for profit. So we do a lot of community work and things like that. So it's, it's a bit more about helping people out rather than just taking the money. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I qualified as a panel bidder in my trade. I've done that for probably 15 years or so. Oh, wow. Um, I had a bit of a work injury. Um, took me a few months to get walking again. And they put me in the office. So I ended up running a panel shop for a big company here. And uh, yeah, I've had 10 years of that. And I just said, enough, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. So I've moved on to the other side of the fence now and sort of hopefully easing back a little bit and get a bit more sort of community orientated, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good man. Good man. What are you, um, uh, now you mentioned to me that you played rugby right up till 36. Yeah, which yeah. Is I had awesome. my last game over here it was, um, I was 36 and I blew out my buddy ACL. And I was sort of like, yeah, it's probably getting enough now. So um, yeah. we were having a competition between the brothers and I. Uh, and it's fair to say I lost miserably because one of my other brothers just cracked 50 and he played his last game. So, You're kidding me. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's bloody longevity. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's he was always great. the fit one, though, so he got away with it, the bugger. Yeah. yeah. Hey, this is a question I've often wanted to ask people living in Aussie. Um, look, have you ever had an encounter with a snake or a big ass spider, like I keep hearing about, they've got over there. Oh, we get big ass spiders. 
um, like hand sized dinner plate size ones. Wow. Um, I have kangaroos on the front lawns most nights. Well, we live in a cul de sac, which backs onto some bush. Uh, we're about 50, like you see the top half of surface buildings from here. But yeah, we have kangaroos most nights sitting on the front lawn. Um, uh, they come down, they're bloody crap everywhere. They're messy buggers, actually. Yeah, that's um, <laughs> it must be, and it must be if you if you can see the top sort of the, the silhouette or skyline, that, that must be some view. Oh, in the morning, they actually all turn gold, like it is actually the glitter strip. Yeah, um, it's cool in the morning having a look at it. We just get, like I say, the top halves when you can't afford the whole half, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's no, nice. I enjoy it. Snakes, I've uh, seen two in 15 years. Okay, okay, so and they were just harmless pythons and stuff, so they don't worry me. Yeah, wow. so it's not a big drama. Wow, um, I've seen more sharks and stuff than I have snakes. Yeah, is that right? Wow, yeah, now look. You know, we've started this whole um, keeping in touch thing, and you just mentioned you might catch up with Seth. We, we're um, we're going to do something. We, we're going to keep in touch and probably plan a trip over, over to Oz um, when all this COVID rubbish goes away. So hopefully next <laughs> yeah. year. Yeah. Um, probably down in New South Wales. We've got a number of boys based down there. So hopefully, you never know, mate. It would be great to have you down there. Oh, mate, I see yeah, those. Yeah, there's there. a load of the boys obviously down in Sydney. Uh, Hugo's down in Victoria somewhere. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's a whole bunch over there, so that's awesome. Um, do you keep in touch with anyone from from school from our era at all? Probably only um, Elvis one, Aaron Whiteman. Yep. Um, he was at my wedding all those years ago, and uh, yeah, we've always kept in touch. Good bloke. He's he's not what I'd call a tradesman. He's a craftsman with yes. his stuff. Just brilliant. Yeah, mate, hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. I'm thankful to Aaron for um he 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 put um you on to me. Um, great guy. Had, I've had a bit to do with him. Um, you know, with his craft, as you say, he's, he's a bloody magician. That boy. Um, yeah. And, and look forward. Yes, to yeah. So if we unfortunately all the oldies seem to be popping off. That's right. That's right. And um, you know, and that well, you know what I mean with what he does and his mahi. If if, if someone's going to do it, you know, you want someone good like Aaron. Yeah. To take Definitely care of it. Not. So he's good. And yeah, good. he's he's probably the only one that I've sort of kept in touch with. There's a yeah. lot of other good blokes that I remember, you know. Um, yeah, you, you were Kerry close. McCall, Nolan yeah. Mackey, all those fellas. Callum Ferguson? You were close with Callum Yeah, actually, called? I was going to ask you, mate, where did he end up? I don't know. I don't know. I did see years ago, I heard he was like somewhere in Scotland. Um, that but, man, that would be at least 12, 15 years ago. Because I always yeah. wonder where he ended up. He was a good bloke. Great bloke. Well. Yeah, loved his yeah. footy, and um, I, I actually ended up working with his older brother, um, Grant, um, yeah. um, in the police, yeah. Um, of course you would have too, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's still in, actually. He's quite a high-ranking um, uh, police officer now. But um, Cullen, yeah, would love to know where he is. So if anyone does know where, um, where Fergus, let us know, because we'd love to um, touch base and you know and, and reconnect. But, um, yeah, I remember you guys were, were, were good mates there too. All right. Well, listen, we're going to release this video tonight, mate, and thanks again because you're number 50. So that's pretty, pretty a <laughs> uh, bit of a milestone. Uh, I would never have guessed we would have got to 50 videos. I mean, that's just unbelievable. Nearly 20 hours of um, video footage of chit-chat from, from our year. Have you got a message you want to send out to the rest of the fellas? Oh, crikey. Um, what, you want some inspirational? That's not going to happen. <laughs> hey, uh, it has been great, mate. Like, seeing this, full credit to you for doing it. It's been brilliant. Um, and I reckon a couple of years ago, none of this would have happened anyway. So it's, it's probably one positive to take out of the whole situation at the moment. So when we can, yeah, grouse, let's all catch up, have a beer, man. It's, yeah. um, there was a good bunch of guys there, and it doesn't matter where you go, where you catch up with them. Um, it's always a good laugh. Like, actually, there's Pat Ford. Um, next time you see him, ask him about an Irish girl named Tallulah and how he got lost in Ireland. Was, um, <laughs> that was at my brother's wedding. We're over there, and I come across him. Holy shit, it's Pat Ford. Is that right? Yeah. Wait, what, you literally, oh, we bumped, send out, you literally bumped we into him? We were about to send out um, search parties because he disappeared. His brother was getting really worried. Thought he'd lost his brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, Patty. But, with a random story like only Pat Ford could. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Patty will be watching this, I know, and, and, and no doubt he'll have um, that, that that story of what uh, Tallulah in his mind. And I know a few, a few of the other boys like Beast will, will, will try and dig out the uh, the, uh, the goodness <laughs> on, on, on that story. Well, my friend, um, we'll come to the end nice and easy. Look, thanks again for joining us. You're looking, looking really good. 
um, give our yeah. best to uh, your family. I, I'm sure I know your wife, so please say hi to uh, Helen uh, uh, from myself and um, and Jamie uh, and Aaron. We, we were the three Maidstone boys. Um, yeah. And um, look, just keep in touch, and um, we'll toast you um, at the at the dinner that we've got coming up on, on Saturday. Oh, and, you know, let's let's keep in It'll touch. Be a great night. Yeah, yeah, it'll be a good one, but you guys will be thought of and um, we'll, we'll keep in touch and we'll, we'll do it hopefully over your way sort of soonish, mate. But, bro, great to see you and take care. Same to you. Thanks very much, man. There you go. There you go, fellas. The one and only tackling machine from Upper Hut, the number 15, Ryan Swanson for video number 50.